gotcha. you'll never and be you, that prepared. People like try to get can. everything right before they start their business. And as soon as you start, something's going to come up. You just got to mm -hmm. start, you mm -hmm. know? And my thing is like fail fast. Cause you know, I, I don't want to yes. spend five years put, putting this together. And then I do it like, oh, yes. I don't want to do this. I'm gonna get in like, oh, I hate this, and get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? say like, that. I say know? that all the time. I'm like, yeah. I rather, you know, when, when I start working with a client, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't want perfection. I want you to have as many failures as possible right now. Right. The right. key is take those, implement them, learn from it, and and keep going. The keep faster going. you do that, the faster you'll take off. Yeah. One hundred percent. I love that. Either way, you'll quit, <laughs> and then you can do something. But you know, but it's, it's true. Like you okay. might find it's not for you. You know what I mean? Like if you fail, 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 you're like, oh my gosh, I hate this. I don't love doing this. You know? Yeah. Fail fast for both ways because then you could do something else you love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah, I'm like that's not what I want you to say. No. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not encouraging people to quit. <laughs> but no, no, you're right. You're you're one hundred percent right. To the ownership game with Gary Montalbo. What would it take to get into the driver's seat of your life and leave your mark? The ownership game starts now. My guest this week is the relentlessly charming Dawn Fitch. Dawn is a graphic artist by trade whose life took a turn when she became sick with an autoimmune disease. She didn't know what was happening at the time, but in an effort to experience some relief from her symptoms, she began a journey of paying close attention to what was going into her body as well as what was going onto her body. When she discovered some of the harmful chemicals found in her everyday favorite skincare products, it didn't take long before she started making her own. And that's how Puka, pure and simple, was born almost 20 years ago on her kitchen stove. This is a remarkable story of the magic that is possible when life throws you a curveball and you choose to get in ownership. Okay, so, you know, we've obviously known each other for years now. Last time we spoke, we were at uh, Sony, right? Yeah. You were, yeah. you had a whole different career. You were a graphic artist. Yep. And it sounds like your story with Puka had already begun your journey, right? Yes, so let's go back to the beginning and kind of walk me through the journey and how you ended up, uh, you know, really getting the idea for the company. <laughs> gotcha. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was uh, in, it was actually before our Sony times that I was working in the city and just living my best life. And um, I was working on 34th Street. And, you know, you always have to think, well, look, I'm from Jersey. So when we get on the subway, we have theme music. And we walk in like, yeah, we're in the city. <laughs> so we had our theme music. And um, I was, it was just a really good day. The sun was on my face. And I just started to feel a little twinkle in my legs. And I was like, mm. you know, like my legs are going to sleep. And within like seconds, I went numb from the waist down, like totally paralyzed. Could not feel my legs, feet. It, you want to talk about a scary experience? And I was just like, and thank God I was with a friend. So he kind of just pushed me over and I like leaned against the wall and I didn't even know, I was just like, I, I can't feel my legs. So he went into the store owner, they called the ambulance. This is on 34th Street. Like we were right by uh, Empire State Building, like down uh -huh. by Fifth Avenue. And they called, the, um, they called the ambulance and I went to the hospital and that began like, I don't know, maybe a seven, eight year journey of trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just doctors, doctors, and they just couldn't figure it. Now this was also in the that was in the nineties. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how we were. We're only both thirty, so I don't know how That's we were right. even really here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't understand. Um, but you know, like it, all they did was they sent me home, and they were like, follow up with your doctor because by that time the feeling had come back. So I started mm -hmm. going to doctor after doctor, and I had so many tests, and they could not figure out what it was. So they really didn't give me any medication and they kept just telling me to go home. You're, you're healthy, go home. But I was like, I don't feel good. And I'm sick. Mm -hmm. I was getting like increasingly tired, fatigued, um, just tingly. It was just, I was just sick. So my parents were like, you're going to keep going. So I really tried to manage my own health care and just not stop going to the doctors. And I would get 
diagnoses here and there. Oh, you have fibromyalgia. Oh, you have this, or you have chronic fatigue syndrome, or you have hypoglycemia. I'm like, okay. And everything they would give me, I'm like, okay, got it. Like, I didn't really take mm-hmm. the med- medication, but I would, you know, look up what I needed to do to fix that symptom. And I would mm-hmm. feel better for a little while. And then I was like, that's not it, because then I would feel bad again. Mm. So I really started digging around into aromatherapy. Like, that was, you know, I, for... Feeling better and just like for the mind, like just lavender and burning eucalyptus and stuff, just because I wanted to, you know, mentally try to feel a little better. And I found a little shop, a little shop in the city. I can't remember what the name it is now. And I used to go in there and visit that lady every day and buy some essential oils. And I started feeling a little bit better. I was like, okay, essential oils. Um, And then I was just, (laughs) you know, I read an article about, you know, your skin and your skin is the largest organ. What you put on your skin goes into your system. So I was like, all right, well, if I'm cleaning out the inside, I'm going to clean out the outside too. Cause I was a bath and body junkie. Like I would slather anything on my skin. Oh, it smells good. And just, you know, so once I started doing all this research, cause I was sick, I was like, what the heck are these ingredients? And mm. I was like, you do not need all of this to moisturize your skin. And mm-hmm. I don't even know if I had that you know, wherewithal at that point. I just was like, don't put anything in your system that you can't eat right now. Mm -hmm. So I just started doing that and I started to feel better. And then I became the annoying family member. Oh my God, you're going to put that on? You don't use lavender? (laughs) They're like, "Uh, six months ago, you weren't even using lavender. Okay, don't. (laughs) So I'm like, okay. But I was getting results and I wanted them to feel better. I was like, you know, I'm feeling better. I want them to feel good. And I was just reading, you know, about petroleum jelly and stuff we put on our skin and you know, I was like, we can't do this anymore, guys. So, I, I mean, I went to school for graphic design, um, and the graphic artist in me was like, look, you know, I started making bottles and potions, and I was like, eh, put a little label on it. You know, I was like, all right, so I'm going to, my mom, when we were little, called us hapukalitas. And we don't, we still like, what is that? But it was a term of endearment. <laughs> we were like, where did you even get that from? She was like, I don't really know. But you fall down, where's my pukalitas? And we're like, oh. So I wanted to put that on the label, and I just couldn't fit it. So I just had all these little bottles of puka, da, 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 da. and I, I always tell people, I was like, I, this is probably why I'm single, like, I do not cook, Gary, like, not like a lick. I blend, but I do not cook. <laughs> but I tell people, if you come to my house, you're not going to eat, but you're going to be moisturized, okay? Your, skin is, <laughs> your skin's going to be good, and you will be moisturized. Um, so, I, I mean, I would have shea butter, the stove, Castile soap, and they were like, this stuff is everywhere. So my friends were like, look, you're making all this stuff. Make more of it. And let's go to a festival. Jersey has a, a festival, PNC Art Center, which actually I think is closed. That festival is closed. It was an African festival. And they're like, let's get a table. Let's go. I was like, all right, let's go. But in my mind, I was like, I don't want to go to this thing. I was like, but I was like, but I might sell something. And they were these shoes that I wanted. You see, like the simple things that you always, <laughs> simple things you always want. People are like, do you always want to be an entrepreneur? I was like, no, I wanted shoes. I wanted shoes. <laughs> Wanted a pair of shoes. <laughs> they were like, oh, well, that's not an inspirational story. I'm like, no, 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 my dad wasn't. A... Then I tried to clean it up. My dad was an entrepreneur and blah, blah, blah. Uh... <laughs> and Gary, I was like, let me clean this story up. Make myself a little more inspirational. <laughs> I, I think wanting shoes is just it's, as good a reason, reason as right? any. 100%. <laughs> thank you. Look, thank you. So we set that little table up and we would, and I was so nervous. Like, I was just like, I made this on my stove and this was not, it, was, it wasn't supposed to be a business. I was just like, oh, uh-huh. people are not going to buy some homemade stuff. So I hid by the bathroom. Like the bathroom was down the, around the corner. So I was like, you know, watching and looking. I, didn't, I would come to the table a little bit. As soon as people would come, I would float off. I didn't want any parts of it. I was like, I don't know what they're going to say. And my friends and family, they sold my little stuff. We sold the entire table. And we were like... Um, I think we just started a business and that's wow. pretty much how the business started. That was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, that is an amazing, <laughs> amazing story. And, you know, I'm really present to just being a yes, hmm. just like being a yes, like opportunity showing up, yeah. like, cause I feel like sometimes the universe, God, spirit, like whatever you believe in, intuition just starts to give you these messages mm-hmm. And you're yeah. like, mm, no, no, no. But you're like, okay, yeah. okay, let's. I, oh, okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> so you're. Yeah. You, it's beautiful. I okay. Like, oh, okay. Yes, next. yes, yes, yeah. yes. It, but that's no. But that's so key because I feel like we get those breadcrumbs all the time, and we don't always trust ourselves 
to follow them? I don't know if it's where we are in life. Like we're so focused on like, okay, got to do what I'm doing, pay my bills. Like we get so into our routine. Like mm-hmm. I just started taking full on drum lessons, like whole set mm-hmm. drum lessons. I'm the oldest lady there. When I got there, they were like, everybody make sure your parents sign into the portal. I was like, well, let me call my 83-year-old mother. Like, Ma, I need you to sign into this portal. <laughs> I need you to sign into this portal for me, Mom. Because <laughs> I'm an old lady taking drum classes. But that was a yes. Because I started like, look, family members have passed. Life is, is getting serious. It is serious. Yeah, but on the flip yeah. side, I was just like, oh, I've always wanted to play drums. And instantly, they, like, I asked myself, so why haven't you? The classes yeah. are like $30. Take a drum class. Yeah. So yeah. I have been taking drum lessons for the last month. And when I have my recital, me and the other eight-year-olds, you're going to come, Gary. <laughs> I, I would but love to. It's about being yes. Like, say yes. Yeah. Try stuff. Like, if you might love it. You might not. But, like, life is here to try things. Say yes. Yeah. I love that. Say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about, <laughs> let's go back to that point in the story. So you realize you have something. Right. In that moment, like what was next in terms of getting things going and and you know kicking off the business? Like what 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 did you think about next? Well, at that point, like we were like, oh my gosh, we started a business, and you got to remember this is two thousand, so websites relatively new. You know what mm. I mean? There was no Facebook. Oh my god, so old. <laughs> that was so, old. so there was no yeah. That was media. MySpace times, right? Yes, that, that, or MySpace even and things like that. Or even before that, yeah. Right, but and even that way, even those things weren't used the way we're using them now. Yeah, 100%. so you wanted to find somebody, you know, you were still picking up a phone book. So we were like, all right, how do we get the word out about this business now? And you know, or, or what do we even do next? So I did put up a website, but I was like, all right, we have to go grassroots. So we started tell, calling friends and calling family and, and looking for other festivals like that to do. And like one would lead to the next one. And then somebody was like, ah, I'll host a party for you at my house. So we did like two years worth of puka parties. Like we dragged all this stuff to people's houses and we played games. And like we almost set up our own little mini Mary Kay mm-hmm. type of, of business. It, it, it was, it's so different the way businesses are done now. And it's, I, well, I'll get into that later, how it's a pro and a con for me. Um, but we just started building the business like that. And it's funny because I was still, I had left Sony at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, this, was, this was in 2000. I had left Sony and I had gotten a job at American Express designing credit cards. What do you, okay. have you ever seen an American Express card? What do you actually design? <laughs> on that? I was like, but the money was good. So I, <laughs> I, I went over that, there. And that, that American Express money is good. I had, I had an good. American Express design job once too. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't have to do that much. I was like, let's move the name on this side. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, they actually, I was there for six months and they had massive layoffs. So I was mm. like me, a couple other girls, last people in, gone. So at this point now I'm like, all right, I'm out here. You know, and I was like, well, I turned it when I was like, all right, you're doing these these oils and stuff. Let's see, you know, let's see if this actually takes off. So I was still making everything out of my home in my apartment um, without an Internet, just a telephone, cell phone and just calling people and collecting a mailing list because we knew we needed email addresses. So mm-hmm. everywhere we went, let's get email addresses. I didn't even use mm-hmm. them then. But we mm-hmm. thank God we had the wherewithal to know that we we're going to need these email addresses. Um, so it was just totally grassroots until we got our very first um, uh, retail location. And that freaking story, I don't want to say freaking on your podcast. I'm sorry. You can say freaking. <laughs> okay. we've, got, we've got the beep function. Don't worry. You can say. <laughs> Wait, see <the> we, <laughs> I always tell my guests, just be yourself. I'll take care of it on my end. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, the, see the things corny people are worried about. I don't want to say freaking. On Freak. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, so look, I was I wasn't working at that time because I now I'm laid off and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do this business, but that's not enough. You know, you can't. I had to be able to support myself. So I like hats off to people who leave their jobs to start their yeah. business. I was already like I was out of work. Like my thing uh-huh. came down the road when I was offered a job, but I was like, I gotta get a job. You know, and this is one of this is the breadcrumbs we talking about. I was like, I gotta get a job. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll get a job. So a friend brought me to another place, a new restaurant, a new rib rib joint. At that point, I you know vegetarian, I need meat. I was like, look at me over here slinging ribs. I was like, okay, but I'm gonna do what I gotta do. So I worked with this guy. It was his restaurant. The owner, such a nice guy. 
So I worked there probably for like a year and a half. And all I did was, I mean, I didn't complain, but I shared my story. Like, I think everything about Puka is me, like, sharing the story and just yeah. telling what happened and, and getting mentorship from him. And he mm. was, like, amazing. And he's like, da, 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 and we would talk. Da, da. So a year and a half in, we're still doing these parties. You know, I mean, it's enough to maintain me, you know, with the job that I have from him. But I was like, it's not really going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he decides he's opening up a catering space, beautiful catering space, right next door. And I was like, oh, this is really nice, da, 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 da. Now, because I've been talk, pouring this business down this man's ear for a year and mm. a half, he was like, you know what? He said, I'm not using the space in the morning or during the day. He's like, if you want to use this for a store, you're welcome to it. And he walked out. I was like, did I just land a street? And this is in, like, I'm in Jersey. It was in Montclair on Bloomfield Avenue, which is hot realty. And mm -hmm. this man was like, oh, you know, I think he said he was going to charge me $400 a month, Gary. And every month he forgot to ask me for the money. Oh, thank God for bad memories. <laughs> I was like, what? So that is how we landed into our first retail place. But I always say that's a pride. Like, I have a lot of pride to the side moments. We talked about some before. And going to sling ribs, like, entrepreneurship is not always sexy. You got to, yeah. if, if this is your dream and you want to do it, sometimes you have to do those other things that you don't want to do. You know, no, but you're pointing to a really beautiful lesson that we should stop on, because I do think, especially now, everyone thinks that it's just sexy. Everyone yeah. thinks like Instagram just makes it so that, and, yeah. you know, it's like everything is flashy, everything. Yeah. And it's like, no, there is like opportunity that when you humble yourself yep. and and use them to build that relationship, use yeah. them to learn because you can learn from anything. Oh, yeah. You know, you can yeah. learn. I mean, look at you. You're freaking selling ribs at that point. Like, not even anything that you eat. Right. But look at all the things that came from it and all the uh, all the lessons, all the connections, all the... I love it. I love it. It's such a valuable lesson there. So we're, we're, we're now rocking and rolling in our very first location. And like I said, he forgot to ask us for rent. He's still... He's one of my best friends now. And mm -hmm. he's, you know, totally a mentor. But I will never... Like, that was so instrumental in growing this business. Like, how would yeah. we have gotten our very first space? But we, sorry, but I did put in the work. You know, I put in the work. It may have been rib work, but I put yeah. in the work for it. And, you know, just kept talking about the business. So we stayed down in his basement uh, maybe another two years. And during mm. that time, that's when I got a call from uh, Will, who was a friend of ours from Sony. And he's mm. like, ah, Dawn, I know you're doing all your stuff. You know, come back and show us what you're doing. I was like, okay. And I hung up and I was like, I don't want to go there. I do not want to show them people I'm making oil. Like, I just felt like, you know, embarrassed. And I was like, yeah. okay, you know, and, and that's an honest thing. People are like, oh, yeah, entrepreneurship is great. Yeah, well, I'm struggling. I'm slinging ribs and I'm selling yeah. oils, you know. So I'm like, I don't know what they're going to say. And you know what? You know what got me there again, Gary? Well, maybe they'll buy some. I can buy some more shoes. You know, they buy some more stuff. I can buy some more shoes. So I was like, okay. So I packed up my stuff. I went to Sony, and they put me in the conference room. And, you know, it was Gail. was a bunch of people in there. I was like, oh, yeah. And I set up all my stuff, and I just started talking. This is what I'm doing. I had gotten sick, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I was like, I shared the story. It was just, like, verbal, like, blah, 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 you know. But I was like, that's what I'm going to do because that's what I'm here to do. And I never know yeah. what's going to happen. And the woman who took my job after I left was like, I have a great connection that works at Whole Foods. And that is how we got into 64 Whole Foods stores. That's how. Now, I always tell people that story, and they're like, oh, my God, it was that. No. The we woman who took your job. Yes, yep. I mean, she didn't take, like, I left. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. She didn't take my job. <laughs> She'd be like, I didn't, she's job. listening to the podcast, I didn't take her job. <laughs> <laughs> she had already left. <laughs> like, okay. Yes, I, and, and she was, I didn't know her. That's the funny thing. All the Sony wow. people that I knew. All my friends were very supportive. She was, yeah. I didn't know her. And she yeah. introduced herself and we had a great conversation and I talked more about it. And she's like, I got somebody for you to meet. Like, hit this. And that guy was so, he was amazing. Now, when I tell people these stories, I said, these stories are meant for inspirational effect and it's true. But there's always a middle piece. You know, we had to get insurance. We had to make sure our labels were right. We had to, there was a lot to do to get prepared, but we got yeah. the opportunity. You know, that was yeah. like the game changing moment, you know, yeah. was, was going but, there. But I think, I'm so glad you pointed to that. And you jumped in and figured all that out. 
Right. It's really what right. I'm getting because a lot of people try to get all that sorted right. out yeah. before. But you actually, the way that you did it, you you jumped in first and then you let the next steps inform the next steps. And what's also beautiful about that is that you had a product that got tested in the market before you even did all that. Like exactly. you, you knew there was a demand. You knew that people wanted this stuff and yep. then, okay, well, now now that we're, you know, let's get insurance, right? Like, right. let's figure this right. out. Right, <laughs> exactly. Let's do all that stuff. And and both ways work. I mean, so I have a really good friend, and she has the same type of business. Um, and we work together. We don't compete. But we are so opposite into the stick. She uh-huh. will think something to death, but she yeah. makes sure her P's and Q's are right. Yeah, but sometimes yeah, yeah. it never gets started. And I'm yeah. like, before she finishes the sentence, I'm unsigned up for something. Gone. Or, and, you know, and I get it done, but sometimes it doesn't work and I waste money. Yeah. But you got to, yeah. like, there's times for both both ways. And yeah. sometimes you got to find a happy medium. That way, yeah. that day, it worked. <laughs> it worked. So it, it was amazing. And so we, we sort of spent the next couple of years just getting into Whole Foods and, you know, getting on the shelves and things like that. And still, you know, I, gotta, I have a downside story, but it's always a learning lesson, um, you know. We were small, and we were like, okay, we were we weren't doing. Um, uh, there was no QuickBooks, so we were doing like Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we didn't have a good accountant. But this is a lesson, like especially now, if you start a business, protect yourself. Okay, mm. we didn't get a trademark done because mm. it was two thousand one, and Dawn was like, oh, I just didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. So we're we're getting ready to put Whole Foods. It's exciting. We're going on the shelf in our first stores in New York, and I get a letter to cease and desist from using this name. I was like, what? Because there was another company called Pookie, and they said we were infringing on their trademark. And mm. I spent a lot of money. Fight, and these people were going, they were, they were not good people. They were going out of business. And I guess they came across our name and was like, hey, we could get some money from this girl. So that was, and they were lawyers. I don't know if the mm-hmm. act, that person was a lawyer, but they were lawyers in the family. So it wasn't costing them anything to throw yeah. up these cases. And I did not protect myself. I did not have a trademark. So we went back and forth. I spent a lot of money. You know, it, they can, you know, they, it was ruled that they can tell that they were going out of business. That you could see what they were doing. But if we were, you know, if I ever got any calls or anything about their company, blah, 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 I had to pass it on to them. And I couldn't make lip bombs for two years. I wasn't even, well, no, I was making lip bombs, but I wasn't making a lot of money for them. But I mean, the money I spent on that lesson, uh, and I just tell every entrepreneur now, you are not too small. Protect yourself. I'm not mm. saying spend a million dollars, but I mean, even if you do a, a dirty trademark, put it in a manila envelope and mail it to yourself. I don't even know if that holds up still now, but you have to at least address what you know or don't know and make sure you protect yourself because it yeah. really, it can really cost you. I love it. And listen, those are, those are big company problems. Like those are the kind of problems that when you're growing it, they, they pop up even when you do your due diligence. Cause you know, when I worked at Lime Life and ran a hundred million dollar operation, they, we still have people hitting us up trying to get away with all that stuff. Like mm-hmm. it, it's just how it's just a game. There's opportunistic people out there. But yes, protect yourself and don't don't overthink it is what I'm trying to say. I'd much rather you guys swing out and go and it. go for it yes. and that you're like, you know, and then you can sort it out along the way. Like, because um, I so many of us just think about that stuff and harp on, harp on yeah. it and don't yeah. really take and action. And you'll never and be that prepared. People like trying to get can. everything right before they start their business. And as soon as you start, something's going to come up. You just got to mm-hmm. start. You know, mm-hmm. and my thing is like fail fast because, you know, I, I don't yes. spend five years put, putting this together and then I do it like, oh, yes, do I'm going to get in like, oh, I hate this and get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? say like, that I say fast. that all the time. I'm like, yeah. I'd rather you know, when, when I start working with a client, I'm like, OK, I don't I don't want perfection. I want you to have as many failures as possible right now. Right. The right. key is take those, implement them, learn from it and, and keep going. The yeah. faster you do that, the faster you'll take off. One hundred percent. I love that. Either way, you'll quit, and then you can do something. But you know, but it's, it's true. Like you okay. might find it's not for you. 
You know what I mean? Like if you fail, 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 you're like, oh my gosh, I hate this. I don't love doing this. You know? Yeah. Fail fast for both ways because then you could do something else you love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. I was like, that's not what I want you to say. No. I'm like, I'm not encouraging people to quit. But no, no, you're right. You're you're 100 percent right. Right. But um, only the people that are gonna quit are gonna be the people that would quit down the road anyway because it's not what they want to be doing. Yeah. Sometimes you yeah, get into yeah, a yeah. venture, you think I'm seeing everybody else doing it. And this is great. If that's not your path or that's not for you. It's going to be hard when you have those times when you want to quit, because if yeah. this is not a passion business or something you love and you come up to those those type of roadblocks, you'll just fold. You yeah. know, I mean, you'll, you'll want to fold. So I'd rather it's find out hard. now that this is not what I want to do than, you know, push forward. Sorry. Totally get that. Okay, so I want to, because you're making this sound so much fun, like <laughs> you're making this sound like a total adventure, but I want to get into your mindset a little bit as this is happening like were you just like all right let's go or was it like ooh, like what how did you process the transition from from like not being an entrepreneur to being an entrepreneur in in, in your mindset it was i don't want to say hard i mean it was different because once i kept you know once i kept i came up with the product and we were getting into it and i was feeling great couple years down the road, I started feeling sick again. Mm. And, you know, even like when I was like slinging ribs and doing all that stuff, I'd have good days, bad days. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I've started this business because I, you know, came up with this product because I was sick. I thought in my mind, oh, that's the end of this story. You know, mm. I was sick. I came up with something. I'm better. It's great. Guess what? I was sick again. And I was sitting at my parents' house and I couldn't feel my feet. My father was like, this, we've had enough. We're going to the emergency room again. And this emergency doctor was the first doctor, after all these doctors, like, what do you think is wrong? And I was like, well, either diabetes, and I knew I'd been tested for that. I was like, or multiple sclerosis. So he was like, all right. He said, I'm going to give you, we'll give you an MRI, like a brain MRI and a spinal mm -hmm. tap. And it came back as multiple sclerosis. And I, I, I always tell people, and I think I shared, I was like, that day I was ecstatic. Like, yes. I mean, not stupidly ecstatic, but I was excited because you can't fight what you don't know. Yeah. And I knew in my heart that was it. Like, I knew that was it. Every symptom, and well, and the spinal tap came back. It was in the spinal fluid. So that was it. Like, I didn't have to guess. Anymore. Everything else was like, eh, maybe it could be chronic fatigue. It could be fibromyalgia. You know, it could be Epstein-Barr, but it just didn't feel like it. Like, I had a diagnosis now. So I was like, that's yeah. right. I'm getting ready to, um, you know, change my life and change my diet. Blah, blah, blah. And then I started reading about it because the internet can really burst your bubble. And it's, it. I just started to almost get so fearful when I would hear mm. about, you know, people with MS and what's happening with MS and there's no cure for my MS. And, you know, I started thinking, can I be in a wheelchair? And, you know, and I was like, all right, you're going to stop. And my parents were like, we're not going down this rabbit hole. And, you know, I decided I did not want to take the medication um, mm. because it was injections. Um, you know, and at that point, like I said, that was 2007, I was diagnosed. So, and, and I feel like because my feet were numb at that time, I went to the, to the emergency room and I found all this out, is because I was having a really bad MS attack. So for the next couple of years, I was super duper sick. Um, like I would have, I would remember at the beginning, and this was years ago, when I said I would go numb from the waist down, that mm -hmm. would happen to me. Like it got to the point it would happen like 20 times a day. Like I, wow. I really, I couldn't drive. I couldn't, I mean, I could walk, but I could be walking and in the middle like zing and it would be like a lightning would shoot down my back. I'm numb mm -hmm. from the waist down for maybe 30 seconds and then the feeling would come back. But mm -hmm. I would be tired after and it was just, you know, it just wouldn't stop, you know, going. So I had I found a great holistic doctor um, who was a medical doctor, but he was holistic. You know, he does holistic first and you know, I mean, the, the medical world would put me on, you know, all the steroids and all that stuff, but I just, I didn't want to do it. So I worked with him, food, diet, nutrition, um, supplements, acupuncture, acupressure. Like I tried, every I worked with him, everything. And holistic is a longer way to go, but mm -hmm. for me, it was a better, you know, it was a better result. And so with MS, you have these scars, you know, you have an attack, you have a scar and the, wherever the scar is, the brain can't read. So that's why I was going numb from the waist down because I had a scar, you know, in that area. So, you know, it, it, hopefully it'll come back. You know, sometimes you can have a bad attack. It won't come back that it came back. But then three months later, like I was in a cycle three months later, my arms would go numb for the. So mm. mentally I was really getting depressed. 
you know, but the, the upside is I don't know how I would have worked a job at that point. So mm -hmm. entrepreneurship was really working for me because there'd be some days I'd be laying on the couch, can't feel my arms. I'm like, Ma, go put that in the box or, you know, or just mm -hmm. like, I had a team that could work for me. So it, it, it was a scary time, but it was a good time. Um, I can't say it was, but the, but the business became like, that's my thing. Like I'm not giving this up because I was in the, in the throes of MS and this was something, my business made me feel better. And, you know, mm. there were silver linings. And, um, so it was so attached to my health. Um, mm -hmm. it was like my, my little, you know, it, it was the thing that kept me going. Like, no, you got to like get up there. It gave you purpose. It sounds it gave like it purpose. gave you. Like you have orders. And what about if there are other people that have MS and you could tell them that they could, you know, they may not have started business, but they just inspiration. So I did mm -hmm. start doing some like speaking gigs and things like that. So mindset was, um, yeah, mindset was all over the place. But I think, I thank God for my business because I don't know how I would have gotten through like the MS, that initial attack without my business. You know, yeah. it, it was my business was my friend. You know, it was like my my it was my friend. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I had and, other friends too, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you had a whole lot of community I around did. you supporting I had a beautiful, you. Beautiful family, yeah. Because what I'm really, I mean, I know you're saying that your business was the thing that um, gave you purpose through that. My experience very often is that that would be the thing that would derail most entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and would be the thing that takes them off track, the excuse, the the you know, and I, I hate to use the word excuse when you're really dealing with like health problems. Right. But it's just really inspirational that you were you found purpose on it in it, but you were also um in ownership, I would say, of how like this is um, no, we're gonna figure this out. Like this yeah. is like you, your mindset kept clear on the goal and kept clear on finding a solution and kept clear on empowering yourself through the process and empowering others really through your products and your story. Yeah, most definitely. And I think it's what, like, what we just talked about. Like, if you don't love what you're doing, when you have a time like that, you're, like you said, you're out. I quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sick. I don't feel good. I'm, I'm over it. But for me... I don't want to say it drove. Well, it did kind of drive me. It was like a combination. It, it kept me going because I was that mm -hmm. passionate about it. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I know I felt relief. I know I'm doing better for my body, you know, during this this time. So I love my business. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that stuff. Because <laughs> well, it's really easy to romanticize it all. But there are days when you're just like, <laughs> Gary, look, this is going to be like a real issue. This is going to be a real episode, okay? Let's go. I got up and put on makeup because 30 minutes ago, I was in that chair crying. Okay. Because <laughs> I couldn't figure out my social media stuff. And I was like, I'm so tired. I looked at the clock. I was like, mascara. I was like, I got Gary's thing in 20 minutes. It is, it's a roller coaster. It really is. And it, it's so much pressure now with yeah. um, 2020 was, a, especially for like bath and body businesses. And 2020 was a wave of, uh, it, it was like a TikTok army came out, okay? Mm -hmm. And these girls, I mean, they're amazing. These girls came in, they started businesses during the pandemic. They started making turmeric scrubs in their house and start, And they already, they, they did it a different way. They built up followers and mm -hmm. then they sold them something as mm -hmm. opposed to the way we used to do it old school. Hey, I've got this wonderful product. Let me sell it to you. They got yeah. the followers first and then they could sell them anything. Yeah. And when we were all in that pandemic, it was an army of young girls that started bath and body companies. Whip shea butter, whip this, whip that. And I'm over here, the old fossil, trying to be like, hey, you know, and they do diff they do business a totally different way. Yeah. So now, 24 years in for me, I've got to shift and try to do business the way, take some of the things that they some of the ways that they do it yeah. and incorporate that. And there's just, there's resistance, mental resistance for me. Like I'm tired. I don't want to do yeah. it, but this is the way the businesses are functioning. Now you have to be yeah. on TikTok. You have to be on Instagram. You have to do reels. You have to do these things. And we're so email heavy, you know, because we, we kept those email addresses. 
that mm-hmm. I send out emails and people buy stuff, you know? But are, am I getting new people? Am I getting younger people? Like that is a whole new thing that I have to turn around now. And it almost sometimes feels like building a new business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I, there is something to be said for older businesses that are trying to fit into the new way businesses are done, which is building a following first and selling them something. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of fatigue. Um, there's a lot of fatigue. And even if you are a new business, like it's not like it, when you shut that camera and you load that reel, uh, you got to turn around and do the work. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you got to get those yeah. products out. You got to <clears throat> ship those products. You got to, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work yeah. and it's good work, but, and there's also another thing the girls weren't doing. They weren't even putting up websites. They were doing what they were like, um, or will DM me for orders or things like that. So people weren't taking taxes, you know, yeah. you still got to do your business the right yeah, way. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know? So yeah. there was a, and, a lot of, and I think it's important to also acknowledge the other side of that. Cause I often meet, entrepreneurs who are so hyper focused on trying to build a following mm-hmm. and not going for the low hanging fruit, right? Not making like I what I really hear about your success story is you guys really went to work at building these relationships yep. and you you shared your story, you connected your you you know, you have your very powerful storyteller, you use that to your advantage you had these events and I'm, I will bet that's why your email list is so strong because yeah. these are real connections that you have made with people through your powerful story, through your personality, through your obvious care and passion. You know, a lot of these kids can't touch that, you, you know? know? Um, scary. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, the, the, I'm not putting anything down. That's a whole different model. Obviously, some of these guys are making a ton of money, but everybody's only chasing that way now. Right. And and it's becoming, um, first of all, I think it's becoming a little sterile. Like where it's it's routine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and yeah, I I I appreciate the entertainment factor, um, but the humanity isn't always there. Like a genuine deep connection right um you know so i i I, i'm still a big fan of this way of doing it of talking um, to people because of that yeah 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 stories gary i got more stories i got a really good one for you i got a really good one for you this one look this one involves like just uh, uh, white work-life balance look that was an ms moment i was like i mean uh uh look i can't even (laughs) can't even get it out can we we have we medical. have to talk about like where you are health wise so that people aren't yes. like yes wondering oh, well, no. that's so. what I said that could have been an MS or menopause moment they just or go menopause. back and forth <laughs> they go back and forth but um, entrepreneurs have to learn how to build what work work life balance and that's something mm-hmm. that I struggle with because at the when I started the business I was single no kids things like that so I didn't have anything to deter me from doing this um, so I hustled all day long and. It got to the point where I was like, all right, you you don't have anything left to give this business. Like, you have to build a personal life. People were yeah. calling me puka. Like, I was like, you you got to have a personal <laughs> identity. <don't, laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't just be this business. So, and for me, I'm a woman of faith. I wasn't going, I stopped going to church. Because guess what? On Sunday, I got stuff to do. You know, I was doing mm-hmm. my other little stuff. And mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. you, you can't let your responsibilities go as an entrepreneur. You have to have some discipline and balance. Like, this is family time. This is that time. Because you don't want to look up 20, 20 years in and all you have is that business and you, like you yeah. said, haven't developed any new friendships or relationships. So I just, it was in my spirit, I was like, I'm going to church. I'm going to go to church. Mm. I'm going to go to church this Sunday. So I got up, went to church. And as soon as I went to church, they snagged me right up. Because they knew I did graphics. They're like, hey, Dawn. They knew they hadn't seen me. Like, we got to work. We want you to work on a brochure. And I was like, dead damn it, no. And I was like, but I can't say no to Jesus. I was like, all right, thank you. I sure will. So they hooked me up with this new member. I was like, I was like, in my mind, I was like, see, I knew I shouldn't have came to church today. <laughs> How horrible is that? I'm oh, sorry, guys. I, just I can't say no to Jesus. <laughs> I was like, I can't. He's gonna get me. I was like, oh my, all these blessings I got, I'm gonna shut up and do this brochure. 
Oh, I so Gary, I had no time. We were Where doing- was the last time you had even designed at that point? I don't even know. I was just like, you don't want me to do it. <laughs> my <laughs> my dad asked me all the time. I'm like, Dad, I, I can't even tell you the last time I've opened do up. It. Like, yeah. I, I, I can't. I'm sorry. Gary, like, Dad, go to Canva.com. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, this was after I wasn't designing and before Canva was there. I sure would have been like, do it on Canva. So I had to go to this lady's house for like, they needed it so quickly. I went to her house every day uh, for like a week, a week and a half. And she was nice, but I I mean, I met her through the church, really nice lady, you you know, older than me, but you know, younger. So we would talk and she's like, tell me about your business. And so I would tell her about the business and then, you know, I would do stuff in the mornings. We'd work on a brochure. I would come back like, oh, guess what happened with the business today? But so she, she's still, again, another really good friend. And so we went on and on and on. So then, okay, the booklet is done. We were very happy. We high five in. You know, we go to church the next week. We had turned it in. The church was so happy. The booklet was done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I was like, okay. So I felt good about that. Uh-huh. So and I was like, oh yeah, I'll call you. She's like, yeah, you always stay in touch. But you always say that. I saw this lady four days, maybe four or five days later, and I saw her in Whole Foods, and she was like, oh, I was gonna call you. She's like, are you ready to be on TV? Uh, girl, bye. I was like, yes. I, unbeknownst to me, she was a producer for NBC Universal. She never even told me. And she put me on the Today Show because she pitched to them a series about female entrepreneurs from uh-huh. hearing my story and all the stuff that they told her. And um, it was called uh, Step Up and Strike Out. And they did this series and she pitched me. And I, that's how we got on the Today Show. And well, it was would you look at God. Spot. Look at God. He look like, at God. Wait, look at God. Won't he, he do it? it. <laughs> <laughs> Won't he do it if you show up? Like, I'll show up. I'll show up, God. I'll show up. But just the way that was put together, tell Gary, me, tell me you Tell me you've been at church every day since. <laughs> Um, sometimes. There's, some holes, there's some holes there's some holes but I for the most part I'm, I'm up in there again. <laughs> or virtually watching it online but I'm a part of it <laughs> but stuff he like knows. that yeah, he knows he I mean, knows there's a, there's a lot of times you're going to advance your business when you don't even know you're doing it you yeah. know I was just talking to her you know getting advice you know mentorship she's like oh I was like oh she's you know really smart and just and look what came out of it so they came in, I think it was a couple weeks later. They came full, full um, uh, cameras and lights, camera action. And, you know, we filmed the whole day. Then we went and filmed us in Whole Foods. And we got a whole segment on the Today Show, which got so many people coming into our website from all over I the bet. country. Because it was nat- national. And that was because Dawn took her, but Dawn realized that you got to, you have other priorities here, not just your business. Yeah. And took my butt back to church and God was like, let me bless my little daughter right here. Yeah. And but, I, it, but again, it's like, I, I feel like you're really masterful at just connecting with people and building relationships. Oh, Gary. Well, I don't, I don't even know if it's, I don't know. It's it, just it's, it's it's, something it's, I enjoy. It, come, it comes so naturally for you that you don't even that. see it as like a like yeah, a I'm skill. I'm just talking. I'm chatty. You're I'm just chatty. being yourself. Yeah. I'm chatty. But it <clears throat> no, but and like I'm an introvert, so there are times that I'm like I I I have to like force myself to talk to people. You know, cause and, and I do what I do, so I'm on all day. I'm like, you know, I'm in the podcast, or I'm on coaching calls, or I'm doing a training. I'm on a stage, so I know how to put it on when I need to put it on. But my instinct is to now then go to my little corner, yeah. and you know, yeah. when I when I'm on the plane, I'm that guy that's like, I'm busy, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> And look, and I have a my holistic doctor that I was talking about. He has a, a large waiting room, and you'd be waiting for him forever. And everybody's always sitting there, like just looking, like oh, they're so miserable. As soon as I come in, I'm speaking to everybody. But so one day it was so loud. We were, I was making jokes. I was standing in the middle of the waiting room, blah, 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 and I could hear the doctor. He's like, Miss Fitch is out there, isn't she? I was like, Ooh. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. but I enjoy that, you know. Yeah. Thank God, I guess I I enjoy that. Um, yeah. So I'm always gonna talk about my business, put it out there. Sure, yeah. Or, because you just never know what's gonna come. It doesn't come in a in a system every time. If you do X Y Z, you don't always yeah. get this. You gotta sometimes just put it out there. Yeah. You know, like those breadcrumbs no, we talk about. And this never happens alone. It always happens in community. Yep. Almost it always definitely. happens in community. And even me as an introvert, like 
like sometimes I struggle with reaching out for that support, right? Like, and every time I do, without fail, it's like it is the universe always delivers. It always delivers. Yep. So it's a really beautiful lesson because if you're, you know, I'm like independent, I got to do it myself. And it's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. In in fact, you can't. (laughs) You can't. You really and it's can't. easier. It's easier, and it's a yeah. it's a more fun journey. More fun. It's a more fun journey when you yeah. to me when you do like I have. I could keep you on here for eight. I'm gonna give you one more. Well, maybe a couple more stories, Gary. <laughs> we were doing the. We'll uh, make this a two part episode. I don't want a two parter, guys. <laughs> we were doing Circle of Sisters in the city, um, and you know that's like a Circle of Sisters Black Expo. Like you said, it's at the Javits Center. And they, you set up, and they have tables, and it's done by the radio station. Like it was BL, WBLS, so they have uh-huh. artists. It's like a whole weekend day's event. So all the people, it's it's packed. Like thousands of people go. So we're like, ah, let's set up and do a table. Now it now to do a vending event there because it's Saturday and Sunday all day. You gotta you know pack up, bring your stuff. They said it's t- those events like that are tiring. Like just yeah, back they're everything. exhausting. They're, all, they're exhausting. So but we always and like myself, sister, friends, everybody. We like. We're gonna talk to everybody. We're gonna smile. Like we saw, we would go by people's um, businesses, and they sit there with their head down, look like they didn't even like their eyes was like, please don't talk to us. I'm like, dude, you're selling something, and you don't want me to talk to you. Okay. So everybody that walked by us, hey, how you doing? And it wasn't even about buying. It was just like, hey, how you doing? Blah blah blah. So you know, yeah. yeah, we spent the whole day. And we all like me, my sister friends, we laughing because like minded people. So, you know, we pack up, we go home. It was a good day. So the next day on Monday, I get a call from a woman. She's like, hi. She's like, I was at Circle of Sisters yesterday. And she's like, um, and you guys were so amazing. My daughter, who I think her daughter was, I don't know, she's eight or nine. She's like, you know, you talked to her about entrepreneurship and you really inspired her. And, you know, she was so inspired when she came home. She's like, I'm so happy. She's like, I want to help you guys. Okay. And she's like, my name is LaShant. And she said, I am... Um, the star of the color purple on Broadway in in Manhattan. She's uh, we're like what? Gary, this woman who won I think she won a Tony for for that for the Oprah's the color purple. She was the the uh, she played Seely, and she fell in love with Puka because we were so kind to her daughter. And she's like, no, just girl power. She put us in every magazine that she that she got like little um, interviews for. She would have like mm-hmm. be holding her Puka. She brought us to Broadway, and we did a puka party for the cast of The Color Purple. She gave us free tickets to the show, and then we went backstage, and just a wonderful... Like, we actually went to see her. She was starring in um, Donna Summer's uh, Broadway play. I think that was, like, a couple of years ago. I mean, and we kept mm-hmm. that relationship. Like, she's a good friend. But from, and, and we always, like, well, who, was, who actually talked to her? Like, so we're like, no, it was me. It was me. We don't know, but... <laughs> We know that it was, but we all know each other. We're like minded. So we know somebody yeah. out there yammering it up. But this woman, who, like I said, star the color purple and just, you know, we're doing cast parties. So everything that happened in the business, and I would get like, do a lot of mentorship. People are like, well, how'd you get this? How'd you get that? Stuff you learn in kindergarten. I, I, be kind to people. Talk. You know, talk, you know, be polite, be respectful. Like, I, there's no way that everything is going to happen. But for us talking and, so trying to be authentic and sharing and not worrying about the dollar all the time mm-hmm, has just mm-hmm. really just given us the best, most beautiful experiences. There's there's a whole book of lessons in, in what you just <laughs> shared there. So many. No, and it's, I mean, if you're listening, like talk to everybody, like yeah. talk and share, yeah. you know, um, share. share your passion. Um, oh, so good. I haven't even. I barely asked you questions. You've been interviewing I, yourself. I'm talk, see, you got you got to stop. I love like, it. I love it. Have a <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is that? How this format goes? I just want to talk. Love- <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best kind of uh, interviews when you don't have to. You know, it just all organically goes where it needs to go. I, I, um, get, I, I did an interview once, and the girl's like, "Oh, you know, I, sometimes we get people and they're nervous to talk." I was looking at her like, "Girl, you know, I got the wrong lady. <laughs> I'm good." You're gonna have to time me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do want to just get into your health and where you are now, so you know, people kind of so we close the loop on that. Yes. Um, so from 2007 to maybe about 2017, um, 100% holistic. 
And, and, and I also want to say, I do not say that with judgment. You know, I do not mm -hmm. judge people for taking medication. And I want to make sure that I always, when I say that, like, it is your choice. It is what you choose to do. I never want to come off holier than thou because I, you know, I mean, I still have, holistic isn't a cure. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the way that I chose to deal with it. Um, so good days, bad days. Um, you know, I will, sometimes I'll, I'll go a year and a half without having any time of MS thing. Now I'm having a lot of vertigo. Um, so I know mm. something has happened. So MS is unfortunately forever. But I mean, God is good. I'm walking, talking. Even like my bad days, I'm still walking, talking. Yeah. Um, you know, I try to eat well. And it's so funny. Like I will fall off the wagon with that too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I will go back to it, but yeah, there's sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I ate that chocolate cake. And I was, I started this group called the Best Life Tribe on Facebook, and we talk about health and wellness and things like that. And I guess I saw one, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I started this group <laughs> on Facebook called the Best Life Tribe, and we talk about health and wellness, like I said. And I saw one of the, I guess she was in the group, because now the group is, I'll tell you about that story, but she was in the group, and she came over and we were at an event and she's like, mm-hmm. She was like, I was watching to see if you were gonna eat that cookie. Girl, you could hem me up and try to catch me all you want. Like, I'm never gonna live like that. Like, I am not like a health guru. I am a girl who's trying, a woman who's yeah. trying. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. so will I, do I fall off the wagon? Every day. Do I tell you things so I could judge you? No, I find out tips and I share them with you. And I hope that, you know, I don't ever tell anybody, you should do all holistic, but try it. If you're on medication, even a living a more, a little bit more holistic lifestyle will help even mm -hmm. if you're on medication. But I was so insulted that she was trying to catch me eating a cookie. I was like, if this was a TV show, I would have just turned around and ate that cookie right in her face. But I was like, mm -hmm. no, John. But I mean, but it there's goes, a lot of- it, it, it goes back to what we talked about earlier about the Instagram world. Right. Because right. there's so many inconsistencies Perfect. with what people, right. people put out. So I kind of right. understand. Yep. Her, that that instinct she wanted to you get know, me. To, yeah she wanted but you know what? i think the difference is i never claim to do that i'm doing this stuff because i have ms and i share yeah. the things that work for me with you i don't tell you to do them i share what works for me so right now i'm in the midst of you know eating trying to eat i try to stay trying to eat good um in 2016 i lost my dad and my brother in mm. within four months and I was not doing anything. And holistic is so much mind work, positive mm. mind, positive attitude. And <clears throat> I went to my holistic doctor. He was like, you're not, you're grieving. You're not doing anything. He said, you've got to support your body somehow. He said, if you're not doing any of the holistic work, then you know, you've know you got to make a decision. And then I did go on um, medication. And mm. it gave my mom peace because my mom was so fearful. She just lost the two men in her life. Mm. Yeah. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. <laughs> so she wanted to make, oh, you know, she was just like, no, take a medication. You know, and she's, my mother's like my biggest supporter, my mother, my sister. So I took it, you know, for them. And there was a part of me that was, you know, afraid too, you know. And when I was diagnosed in 2007 versus all of the treatments for MS now in 2024, it's a lot different. So mm -hmm. there is no cure, but there are a lot of, you know, there are other med medications that can keep things at bay. So I do go back and forth with, should I be, like I started taking the injections, the very, you know, the oldest base one they had, which is like, it has the least coverage for you, but it was something, you know, and it was something that I was willing to do because it was so, um, it had been in the market for so many years, they'd run the most mm -hmm. tests on it. So that's where I am right now. I'm trying to roll off of that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but if I do, <clears throat> sorry, if I do, I do, if I don't, but I mean, the holistic, when I do poorly with my food and diet and stuff, that's when I feel worse. So I you know that, that impact. yeah, I know it's working. You know, if I don't do my meditations and things like that, and I let myself get overwhelmed and I cry in the chair, I know it's time that I need to, <laughs> you know, like get, get back to my holistic roots. So I'll never lose that. You know, I'll never be a guru yoga genie with it, but it's always going to be a part of my life. So thankfully yeah. I'm, I'm going to say I'm well right now Yeah, and I'm going to, I plan and to stay that way. There's something really powerful in what you're sharing too, because I feel that when people take on things like that, whether it's weight loss or developing a new habit, or they go through this 
oh, I, I didn't work. I failed. I got off of it. And then they just go, oh, it didn't work. And then they just like walk off, you know, uh, resign. Yep. And I love how you are aware that this is your true north. And yeah, I'm going to go off course because yep. that happens when you're sailing. Mm -hmm. And then Ooh. you keep coming back, right? You, 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 you keep coming back to your true north and resetting. And it, it's a because there's so much humanity in that in that interpretation in that uh, relationship with it because we're so hard on ourselves you know we start beating ourselves up the oh, moment we got off and time. then you just throw up your hands and it's like no 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 right. you go you come back tomorrow you, you come, we'll do it there's again. nothing Gary, yeah what you just said when you're sailing you're tri mm. <gasps> that's a book like I love that analogy I love that. <laughs> You know, you are going to go off from your, yes, yeah. from your, two, you are sailing. That's beautiful. And, and like, yeah. I can really see the visual for that. And that, that yeah. is so true. And there's so much power and just being grace, giving yourself grace. All right. So I didn't do it today. I'm going to try again tomorrow. 100%. That's it. 100%. And, and I struggle yeah. with that. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, wait a minute. Calm down. You, yeah. You, you, you it's a life practice. Right. It's, it's a life practice. Never you know, ended. and yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I don't even know that we will ever get it 100%. It's, I'm always, like, self-correcting, always, you know. But, you know, it's it's easier than it has than it was before, and it feels mm. better. You know, it feels better mm -hmm. not to beat myself up all day long because entrepreneurship, you can beat yourself all oh day long. Oh, my God. Say it again for the people oh, in the back. Oh, from your money to your taxes to your this to – if you really in that mindset, you could beat yourself for the minute you get out of the bed and then punch yourself in the face and get back in the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You, you you have to adapt adapt that adopt that positive mindset. And I know people are they're sick of hearing positive mindset self care, but I don't care how you say it, you gotta do it. You gotta do some yeah. some portion of it. You know, whatever it works whatever it looks like for you. But those are the things that's the people always talk about structure in the business. Like you gotta have your you know, your structure and your banking has to be set up and da da da, da and you have to have a good foundation. If you don't have a good mind foundation, that's just as bad. You know what I mean? Like you got your mind has to be just as good as the business. That structure. You yeah. Know? Or or even better, because quite better. frankly, you can <laughs> yeah. you can always get your finances straightened out, exactly. you know. <laughs> Once your mind goes, but, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it really is everything. And what I think the thing that people I feel get caught up uh, is back to what I was saying before, that they think it's like Oh, I'm gonna choose to have a positive mindset. Okay, and then you just walk off into the sunset. Right. No, you choose to have a positive mindset, and then you choose to have a positive mindset, and then you choose you to have choose a positive, to have mindset, a positive mindset, mindset, and then you Howdy. and you just you keep oh doing gosh. that That's over it and in over. A That's it in a nutshell. It's like you never actually get it. You just keep oh, okay. Okay, and then the spans that you yeah. keep it are a little bit longer, but yeah, it's, it's a life work. Yeah, life that work. that that what you just said right there. You yeah. do that enough times, you do develop the muscle to hold on right. to it a little bit longer, yep. and to recuperate quicker. Yes, yes, like yes, like I didn't cry all day. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. No, no, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Listen, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with crying it out. There oh, are times you just that. gotta go. Okay. <laughs> But but that go. that yeah. right there right like yeah. you can just it yeah. could take you out and, yeah. and sometimes it some people it takes them out for a week yeah a month yeah. you know yeah, like sure. exactly but then right. it just takes you out for a couple hours a yep. couple minutes that yep. that's that's winning have you cry <laughs> clean it up and keep it moving yeah most definitely one hundred percent I love that. <sighs> Okay, my friend. Um, I think we'll pause it there because we can keep going we and going. Do part but two. will you please come back? I this was so, so much fun. Yeah, are you gonna be like, oh my god, Dawn is on here again? <laughs> like, hey, part sixteen, Gary. <laughs> Not at all. I'm literally sitting here with a smile on my face the whole time. It's so good, so entertaining. I love I it. Really I love it. I love it. I really it's love been you. so wonderful fun. reconnecting with you. You as well. After as well. all these years, congrats. Congratulations on all of your success. Please, you. please Thank you. go get yourself. Go try Puka. So I ordered. Uh, the, so I we hadn't talked in uh, 20 years or something. Yeah. And I was following you on LinkedIn. And I saw you posting like you were like you were. I, we have we have sampler packs of our shea butters. And I was like, I don't know. I was just like, oh, yeah, let me let me you support Don. Oh, like, yeah. Please. 
So I ordered the sample pack and I was like, these are, <laughs> babe, come over here. Smell these. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> And they and he took some for work and everybody's like that stuff is good. What you know? So it, it's a, it's about. a beautiful product. It's really good. And you know sometimes like shea butter is so, but yours is so smooth and easy Yay. to get on, and you don't have to like. Ugh. Thank you. Um, so good job, you good job, that good job. Connection and that you supported me. You, you know what I mean? It so it's it's like. Again, Puka's like start, it's going yeah. on another journey. I don't know what's gonna come for the Gary journey. Something, something come will come. It. Something yeah. will. You oh, well, you definitely you will get some new customers, but um, yep. I'll take who it. knows? Maybe this I'll introduce you. This game. This game. I'm on the ownership game. This game. That's right. <laughs> That's you <know>? right. <laughs> All right, my love. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will definitely have you on the show soon. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gary. Bye, everybody. Dawn is a perfect example of the power of having a growth mindset. Instead of feeling defeated or sorry for herself due to the many health problems that she was experiencing, Dawn chose to turn her struggle into her purpose, letting her journey inspire and help others along the way. Her openness, her vulnerability, and her authenticity in sharing her story put her on the path. But it was her willingness to be a yes to every opportunity even when it didn't seem like an opportunity, that illuminated the next step and then the next. All the while, learning from every mistake along the way, getting better and better each day. And to think that it all started with her playing around in her kitchen stove. I hope that her story has been as inspiring for you as it has been for me. As always, thank you so much for joining us. If you've been enjoying the podcast, please, please, please don't forget to share it with someone that you love. It would mean the absolute world to me. And I think the person you share it with will enjoy it as well. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Ownership Game with your host, Gary Montalvo. Make sure to like and comment on your favorite podcast platform, as well as subscribe so that you never miss an episode.